Good morning and welcome back to your soap packing channel. Um, today we are going to look at different ways to juice up your soap. Well, actually, I'm going to show you one way in this video. Then I'm going to do two more videos on the same batch of soap so that I can show you different looks and styles that you can actually add onto your soap after you have made them and you've cut them. So, oh, I'm dropping this gimbal. Um, I'm trying to upgrading my uh, photo video quality and yeah, this is total new learning curve here. And then after those three videos, I'm going to try to do a blog style because we're going to go on holiday and I'm going to take my soap making equipment with and try to show you a little bit more of South Africa. So keep an eye out or look out for that. Um, it's going to be different. I'm not sure if I'm going to be good at a blog type of videos, but I'm going to give it a go. So I will take your feedback and see after that if it's going to work or not. But for today, let's jump into this first video. Okay, so here we go. Um, okay, I've got my mic at the right place. Let's see. Now this is one of my cake scrapers that I uh, bought many, many, many moons ago. Um, this one is made of aluminum. Now, um, when I tried the first time on one of my soaps, what have happened is I made the soap, unmolded it, and I immediately tried it on the soap. And there was some acoustic soda, I think a little bit active still on it. Because the soap that was left on it actually etched my sides a little bit. I don't know if it's actually showing on camera properly. But I've got these dull two lines here. So just keep in mind, if you use an aluminum kind of scraper, um, that active lye will react to it. If your soap um, cured for at least two or three days, it should not be a problem anymore. But, um, and I've got a link in the description box for a similar scraper, um, but it, uh, it is a set made out of uh, stainless steel. So if you're interested in that, just check. There's an Amazon link in the description box for a set of scrapers that is actually made of um, stainless and not aluminum. But let me show you how to use them. So for these guys, um, what I like about this specific scraper, it's got different um, textures all around them. And I've tried the first one just to take the scraper and drag it over it freehand. And it, I didn't scrape it deep enough, so I had to do it the second time. And freehand is really difficult to stay in the same lines. But the easy way is just to put your scraper on the table, your soap on the table, keep both of them perpendicular. And all that you do is you take it from the one side and you drag it to the other side. And you repeat. So this one. And you can actually take it as deep as you like. You can stop here or you can go deeper. So let's just carry on with this one. Until we get the rounded shapes here. And there you go. So this is actually... Um, just to give it more check texture and change it up a little bit. So this one is the one of the little rounded shapes here. Um, let me just move it off. This was a little bit rounded here. Then I've got one that is, uh, what do you call it, zigzag or serrated edge. This is a, a larger serrated one and then you've got a very fine one here. And this one's got a little bit of a kind of a loop in it. So. Let's just put this one aside. Let's try another side. Same thing, perpendicular, and you just drag it from the one side to the other. Ah. This looks very similar. I think if I take it even more, I didn't take it to make little point, pointed edges here. But there you've got two different soaps here. That the one is a little bit finer than the other one. Let's try another one here. Let's go for the very fine serrated edge here. Um, yeah, it's going to be high enough might not serrate the top part there and it's going to leave a little line here at the bottom but so what and 
there you go. Three very distinct different looks here. And let's try this other one, the last one here. This side won't be, you can't really use it perpendicular. Um, I'm not sure how you're going to use it. So you can try it if, you, uh, if you're good at freehand. You might be able to try it, but um, I don't think I'm going to put my hand to it. I'm just going to use this last one. And I'm going to try this one for you. wider lines inside okay, let me just clean this up quickly and the thing is if you've got lit, quite fresh soap these little pieces you can press them together and if they are not too dry you can actually use them as soap clay again so this is still very moldable this soap is now nearly a week old um, the moldability or the pliability of your soap is going to depend greatly on the water amount that you use in there, the kind of oils that you used in there. So not every soap is going to give you this same kind of pliability. This one is a little bit dry for soap clay. So one can add a little bit of water to it to get it a little bit more moldable. And yeah, then you can use the, the extras, you can reuse it. It's soap making awesome you never need to waste anything anyway okay and that there is it four different um, textures on your soap so this is the first video keep an eye out for the next one where we're going to use some soap clay and stencils on top of our soap and then the third one is still going to be um, I think what we're going to do the third one is to stamp soap with stuff that I can find in my house in Michael so keep an eye out for that Happy soaping until I see you guys next time. Keep up. Well.